So often when you're building out a web application, you're going to have to do some type of long running process. And I kind of made some videos about this in the past, but I want to hit on this topic one more time. I have a side project that I've been working on with another YouTuber called Project Planner AI. And I want to share with you how using something such as polling can help achieve a really nice user experience. So the idea of this project is to basically have AI generate you a starting plan, which you can follow to basically build out a side project. So let's go here. I'm going to say create a plan. I'll say an app to help track recipes. And I'll say a parent or something like that. Now, the thing I want to hit on in this video is asynchronous processes, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And notice that it creates a placeholder card here that says we're generating your plan. Please wait about three minutes. Now I can go ahead and do this again. So I'll say an app to help find a dog sitter. Uh, I'll say like dog owners. So if we were to take a look at our network tab, you'll notice that about every 20 seconds, this page is going to do a full refresh and pull in any of the changes that might have happened. Behind the scenes, these are long running asynchronous processes. I'm using SQS and kind of kicking off an event to a message broker that gets picked up at a later time and processed. And then at some point, these plans will be set to status completed and you'll see the actual results pop up here after about two to three minutes. And like I mentioned, I'm working on this application with Hosna, which is another YouTuber who does Next.js and other content related to web development. So go ahead and click on our link in the description of this video if you want to follow another person who does Next.js content. Basically this year, my goal is to work more with other content creators and work more with other developers and try to build real products. I think when you work with others, you can achieve a lot more than when you work with yourself. So as you can tell, it's doing the polling, it's done it a couple times so far, and it finally finished generating the plan for one of these projects. This other one should hopefully come in at some point as well. All right, and there is the other project. Okay, so it takes, it takes some time, right? And this is something you're gonna run into all the time when you're dealing with web development. You'll have to do some long running process and you need to notify the user when it's done. So let's take a peek of what the plan was generated from projectplannerai.com. I'm gonna scroll down here. It kind of gives you a synopsis of the project, it gives you some example names you can use for your project. It gives you some starting icons you could potentially use for your like fave icon up here. It gives you just some ideas of assets you might be able to use on your landing page or whatever. Again, a lot of this stuff is a work in progress. We're kind of prototyping to see if this is actually a viable product that people would pay for. You get some competitive analysis where it basically tells you all the other projects or applications that exist in the same space. It tells you when they're founded, how many employees they have, et cetera. Um, it gives you a nice color palette and explains why doing this color palette might be good for your application. And then behind the scenes, we use Dolly AI to generate your dashboard could look like or what your application could look like. These aren't the best, but I think as Dolly improves, I think they can give you much better designs. Uh, we give you some example fonts that you could potentially use in your project and you click on them, you go straight to Google Web Fonts. And then we also generate some features. So we have some core features that your application will need, right? And then we also have some features that aren't necessarily core, but like they'd be very useful to add to your application. So I will say this is the first iteration of our application. We're going to try to improve it and see if this is even something worthwhile to investigate. But if you guys want to check it out and give us some feedback, we would love that. So all right, enough talking about that. Let's talk about how polling works. All right, let's make a user. And as you saw, I made a request to a backend, right? So I went ahead and say, generate me a plan. Let's talk about how polling works and how asynchronous actions work. So I'm going to say, generate a plan. And the way this is working in the system that we have built is when you generate a plan, it's going to do a couple of things, right? The first thing it's going to do is create, create an initial plan with status of pending. Okay. And then that immediately is going to return back to the user. Uh, it'll just go ahead and return a plan ID. And this is important because we're going to use that plan ID to know when this thing is done and we can stop polling. But behind the scenes, I do want to talk a little bit of how the asynchronous action part of this all works out. So in our API, again, this is our Next.js uh, action. This is a server action. I guess I could potentially put that down here, server action. So when that runs, it actually emits an event. Okay, so we have an SQS queue over here. And when this action runs on production, we actually send off an event to a queue. Now, this is how we are doing the asynchronous operations in our project. I'm going to go ahead and say send event to queue. And that queue is basically going to hold a bunch of events. So what happens is I have another Lambda that's running. And that Lambda is basically going to pick up these events and start processing them. So I'm going to say consume events from queue. Okay. And now what this does is this is going to interact a lot with OpenAI. So we're going to put OpenAI over here. 
And that's going to use OpenAI to generate a bunch of different things that are related to this plan, right? So for example, it's going to generate the assets, the icons, um, the summary, information architecture, and then the features, etc. And when this is done running, I'm going to go ahead and put a database here. I probably should have had one before. I'll just say Postgres. We got a Postgres database there. And when this thing is finished running, it basically writes some data to Postgres and says, hey, this plan status is now completed. Okay. This is basically the main loop of how asynchronous actions work. Somewhere you have to kind of update somewhere saying that this thing is done. So the thing I haven't talked about yet is that the UI is actually going to do something called polling. Polling is probably the easiest way to keep on checking to see if something's done. You can do long polling or you can just do interval polling. In my case, I'm just doing interval polling because I think it's super easy to set up. So basically, when you do this on step 3.A, I'm going to say periodically check um, if plans by ID are done. So what this is doing, it's going to make a request to the back and say, hey, is my plan done? And over here at some point, it's going to say return plans status is equal to either pending, error, or completed. Okay, And that's basically going to fetch from the, the database here, get the plan status, and return them to the UI. One thing I forgot to mention here is that on 2A, we go ahead and mark status as pending for that plan. So this looks kind of complicated from a diagram perspective, and it kind of is complicated. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, but I think this is a pretty resilient way to handle this because the way SQS works is that if for whatever reason this thing fails, you can actually set up a dead letter queue, which kind of acts as just another SQS. So it can set like a dead letter queue. And if for whatever reason the plan fails to generate after three attempts, you can just put it in a dead letter queue. And then later on, you can come back and check to say, hey, why did this plan fail? What about this plan causes it to fail? So that's like an overall approach to how this all works. Now I am going to, show you a little bit of the Next.js code and the, the backend code and kind of walk you through how that works. Again, this code is all private. I'm not going to release this code, but maybe just sharing a little bit with you all can help you understand. So here's my generate plan action. When I clicked on that blue button in the modal, it's going to invoke this action. And what this action does is make sure that you're authenticated. It verifies you have enough credits. And then it creates that initial plan with a status of pending like I talked about, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Um, now down here, this is where I send off that SQS event. I say, if we're running in production, go ahead and send off an SQS event with some information such as the plan ID and the user ID. Otherwise, if we're running locally, just go ahead and invoke the plan generation code off the bat. Just go ahead and run it. And then finally, we tell the UI to revalidate the path. Again, this is Next.js, so we tell the front end to revalidate so it gets those new cards and shows them in the loading state. And then we finally return the plan ID here. Now, the way I have this all set up, I'm going to go look at SST because I like using SST to deploy my applications. The way I did this is I created a queue here and I went ahead and just set a consumer to basically consume the messages from the queue. So I just went ahead and gave it a, a file over here called plan generator. It's going to call a main function and that main function basically runs the generate plan helper, which does all that open AI stuff. It'll refund you credits if stuff fails. It'll go ahead and update the plan and set the status to um, completed or aired based on various things, right? But that's the overall gist. The cool thing about um, SST and SCDK is you can specify how many retries you want to just keep doing on the event in case they fail. And then finally, if something goes wrong, you can send them off to a dead letter queue like I displayed in this diagram over here. So love SST. I love CDK. It's very easy to just like set stuff up and deploy them to Amazon. Now let's go ahead and look at the front end because there's something going on here that's important to kind of point out. So let's go ahead and look at the dashboard because that's where the polling's happening. So basically, when I click on the create plan button in the modal, that pushes that ID into an array. So if I go up here, we have an array of polling IDs and this is going to push the value into that array. And what we do is we listen for that polling IDs to change. So if someone were to push an ID into that, I basically create an interval and every 20 seconds I just pull the back end and say, hey, you know, just refresh this route and that'll grab in the latest um, information for those plans. And then at some point they will go from status pending to status completed or aired. I also listen for the plan information. So when you do a router.refresh, the React Server component is going to refetch all the plans, which means it's going to rerun this effect, which is basically going to go through those poll IDs and make sure that it only has IDs 
or things that are still pending. So I just filter out all the ones that are not pending. And at some point when they're all done, set polling IDs will filter down to an empty array, which means that this effect will fire off again, but then the interval is never gonna fire because there's no IDs to actually listen to. So that's the overall approach. Now I would probably say if you can bring in WebSockets, it's a little bit more complex to bring in WebSockets. Typically you have to use like a third party service or you have to set up some type of persistent stateful server that, so you can do WebSockets. Doing WebSockets in Next.js isn't as straightforward as doing it on like an Express server. But I think WebSockets just give you a lot more flexibility because you can send that event the moment the plan is done versus having to poll every X amount of seconds and see, hey, are you done yet? There's also a long polling, which I'm not going to talk about in this video, but that's another approach that you can do if you want to have the polling kind of live on the server side of things instead of the front end side of things. But if you're a beginner, you're just learning how to do this type of stuff, doing just periodic checks on the front end is an okay solution as long as you turn off the interval when the stuff is done or aired. All right, that's all I want to share with you all. Be sure to click out this project if you guys want to kind of check it out. And remember, be sure to give us feedback if you think this is useful or not. Um, if you don't think it's useful, then I don't want to spend too much time working on this. But overall, I mean, I think just getting a, an overall view of like what features you might need. I personally have seen this be really useful because it kind of tells you features that you didn't even think about when you're trying to build a side project. And uh, it just helps expand your vision of what you're trying to build. So that's kind of why we're doing this. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Have a good day and happy coding.